Hey, I'm at the laundromat, so I thought to myself, I can make a quick video. I'm really getting sick of making videos, can I be honest? I think I'm burnt out. Anyway, I'm depressed. That's all I can figure that I am because I don't have any desire to do anything. I find everything extremely boring, repetitious, and monotonous. Even after the second day in Winston-Salem, I was like, Is that all there is? Is this all there is? Boy, life is boring. Maybe it's my age. Almost 65. Hmm. So last night, I was trying to make chicken teriyaki, and I cut up my chicken breasts all beautiful. Two big chicken breasts, you know, in little little half pieces, so I had four of them. Cut them in delightful little chunks, and I had my teriyaki sauce that I get from um, in a bottle from Walmart. I like that. It's really good. It's a little salty, yeah, but... I add oil to it, sesame oil, and then I put it in the air fryer, and my first batch, because see, uh, you can only get so many pieces in the air fryer, and I had to uh, do two portions, you know, first one, and it came up beautiful, and, and I take my bowl out of the fridge with the marinating remaining chicken breast chunks, and I have the fork in the other hand, and like right now I'm having a really hard time holding this phone. Um, I don't, I don't have my thingy with me, <clears throat> any of my sticks or anything, my whatever. And uh, and I felt my hand letting go of the bowl, and you want to stop it, right? And I got a spoon in one hand, and I try to drop the spoon and grab the bowl with the right hand, and. Uh, down it went, shattered bowl, chicken chunks and glass all together. And, and you know, these are, I gotta change hands. These are the things I'm dealing with and I, I don't, you know, cause I'm thinking to myself, I'd like to try um, thread banging, we used to call it. Now they call it upscaling of clothing. You take used thrift store pieces and you make a new piece out of it. I was thinking I'd like to make some tops, you know, some little hippie tops for myself. And um, I, I, I'd hand sew them because I was always very good at hand sewing and I hate using a machine. I don't have a machine. So I was going to do that and then I'm like, who am I fooling? I, I, I can't even hold the damn bowl of chicken. I know, I know. You need to see a neurologist. No, I'm not. I know what's wrong with me, and it's all downhill from here. Both carpels are shot to hell, but they don't want to operate yet. They're not bad enough. Well, they're bad enough for me to be able to drop things. You know, it all started years ago at um, in Milo, Maine, where I lived. And I'd be cutting stuff with a knife, and wham! It just would go flying out of my hand like a, like a spasm. Thank God we had wood floors. It just would stick into the floor. I never stabbed anybody, but it was happening while I was caring for Dennis, too. And I'm like, holy shit, if he was ever going by, I would have stabbed him. I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself anymore. I wake up, and I'm in pain from head to toe. I want to go back to my homeopathic roots. That's what I really need to do. I need to start looking this stuff up and trying to treat myself and use food and use homeopathy, maybe some herbology. Those were the ways I dealt with everything years ago. And then, I don't know, I just lost myself. When you're married and you have kids, you lose yourself sometimes. And then I was the caregiver. And still the grandmother, and still the helper, and then I lost my husband, and I'm lost again. And now I'm just like, I don't know what I am. I'm chief dishwasher and child carer. So, where do I go from here? I just don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And why do I have to pee all the time?
the time. It's driving me insane. Well, I guess I'll go in the laundromat now and go pee. Then I'm going to walk over to the family dollar because I want to get two dish pans, a black one and a mop because I ruined my socks on the floor. Nobody mops it. And everybody wears their shoes in the house. It's just a mess. And it was bad enough when we were crowded from just being four people in a two-bedroom house. Now it's twice as bad because we're... No, that's one, two, five people in a two-bedroom house, plus business implements everywhere. But they need me. I don't want to bail out on them when they're finally having real success. I mean serious success. I'm not, they were able to stop their Uber jobs just to do what not. It's shocking it really is people love the jewelry and they want to buy and they're getting a very good following and they people want wholesale and they're gonna do it they're gonna do it all but it's three of them working again round the clock but this time with great success so much success that they're starting to pay me back which is really nice Paying for all the groceries, all the bills, they got the money now. What do I do? The women on my Facebook uh, travel page, they're like, you got to live for yourself now. They can figure it out for themselves. Yes, they can figure it out for themselves, but it's going to hold them back seriously if they have to drag Finn every time they have to go on a buy. Or if just Michael goes. Or just Michael and Denny goes. They need, they need the three of them to pick. They found smelters they can work with. They've got dealers they can work with. They're able to find their jewelry at excellent prices. And then they offer them at excellent prices. And they're doing great. And I am instrumental in helping them. They had a hell of a night Sunday. I wasn't there to help. To take care of Finn. To make coffee. They're good to me and I'm good to them. I love them. I want them to succeed. And Michael's like, I promised dad, mom. I promised dad. He said to Dennis, two weeks before Dennis died, he said, I want you to know I'm going to take care of the family. And Dennis said to him, you mean like Rob Banks and shit? That was my Dennis through and through. Now I'm just heartbroken. I really am. I know that he could be a pain in my ass, but I loved him. And he was such a part of my world. And now I feel broken. And everything I do, it's like, eh. At first it's fun and it's nice. And then it's like, can I go home now? I just want to get in bed, throw the covers over my head and say, F this, I am so done. Well, my kids need me. Bonnie wants me to come back up. She wants me to stay longer. Where's my van? I don't even know. I can't even get a hold of them. Poor Curtis. He's going through hell, and he's not answering his phone. But he does have... And I can go through the guy who sold me the engine. He would contact the, um, if I needed to talk to someone. But I'm sure they'll call me once they get a chance to get around to my sorry-ass van. I gotta go check my laundry. This is my story and I'm sticking to it. I'm so sad. I just, I love my family, I love my Finn, but I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm in pain. I wake up and I'm like, oh God, why? Why do I have to go through another day? I didn't take my Meloxicam either because I didn't eat breakfast. I don't feel like eating right now. Hmm. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I love you all. Sheila B., please let me know that you're all right. And hi, everybody else. And thank you for watching, newbies. And uh, I don't know why. It's like, I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. <laughs> I guess because I love all my widows and all my single ladies and all my guy friends. You're all really awesome. 
and uh, I, I guess I don't appreciate you enough. Thank you for letting me vent <laughs> in the ionosphere, whatever you want to call whatever we're doing here, the YouTuberama. Okay, that's it. I'm going because I got to pee. Bye.